Stephanie Healy and Brett Rustand, thanks for being with me. It's a pleasure. Yeah. You both were nominated to be fellows at the uh, Arizona Civic Leadership Academy. What kind of expectations did you have going into it, Stephanie? You know, for me, Michael, I was had very um, open expectations, if you will. I, I wasn't sure what to uh, expect going into it. I was excited and certainly honored and thrilled to have been chosen. Um, I think the the biggest surprise for me is just absolutely the quality of the speakers and the presenters and the material that's been provided to us. It's um, been an incredible learning curve. A lot gets thrown at you very quickly, and it's very intense. And Brett, your thoughts about that? Absolutely. For me, it was uh, a lot of the expectations around uh, the, the different oppor opportunities to be in public service and the, the route that public policy follows, uh, the structures that exist in Arizona, that, and the opportunities to serve in different civic leadership positions. And Brett, did anything that you learned surprise you? Was there some aspect to a, a public policy issue or perhaps even something about your own leadership skills that, that emerged that, that surprised you? Um, I wouldn't say surprised. Uh, there's been a lot of uh, wonderful learning opportunities from some of the great presenters have been able to explain uh, some of the complex processes that have to go through to shape and form public policy. So I think that has been the biggest learning experience uh, and, and I would say a bit of a surprise is, is just how complex the structures are. And the same question for you, Stephanie. How, any surprises? come out? Yes. And if I, what I've been um, most surprised thus far in the sessions is knowing going into this the, the difficult nature of our budget and um, the state's fiscal issues, but really truly when you get into the complexity of what we're facing, the structural deficit, the revenue cycles, the expenditures, um, being able to delve into that with experts in that field was very eye-opening. When you move beyond the political discussion and really look at it for what it is and to understand um, how long it took us to get here and what it's going to take to move us out of here, there are no easy solutions. And I think that was uh, very eye-opening. And Stephanie, you are president of the Hospital Council of Southern Arizona. What skills have come forward that help you with your job? Um, I think keeping an open mind, it's difficult sometimes to go into these situations on these um, very uh, passionate issues and having an open mind and not bringing in your own set of um, beliefs and being able to learn from other people. We have a very diverse group of people, um, a lot of different opinions and thoughts and political affiliations, I believe. And it's been a great and rewarding experience to hear from everybody there. And I've been able to, I think, translate that too into my work in understanding healthcare, being a, another complex uh, issue area and being able to keep a very open mind in terms of uh, um, being able to address the issues rel rel relative to the state and to healthcare. And Brett, same for you. You are the vice president of the Crest Insurance Group here in Tucson, uh, a business uh, that you help run. What kinds of things have come out of the academy that help you in your daily business life? Well, Stephanie mentioned a, a real understanding of the challenges and the opportunities we face ahead with the economy and the growth. Uh, that is possible and the things that we need to put in place to, to make that growth happen. Uh, as you separate, as Stephanie said, away from the politics and the partisan side of things and just discuss the issues and focus on uh, exactly how we need to get through this, uh, I think there's a better understanding of, of all the challenges that we face. And also I think that uh, there's a real opportunity to, as we, the pi private and public sector to work together. And I think a better understanding of how the private sector can influence the public sector and vice versa and can become involved has been a real eye-opener for me. Now, Brett, what, what kind of leadership traits would it take from a private sector person such as yourself to help make public-private cooperation go better, something that may have come out of the academy? Well, as, as all civic leadership is, is, is a commitment to the greater good is a commitment to beyond uh, work together as many people as possible and to gather together those groups to, to see beyond partisan issues and to make good policy. I think those in the private sector that have that desire uh, to serve and to, to open up to other ideas and, and find the best options, I think it's absolutely necessary that we have private sector involvement and that we increase that involvement in the public sector. Stephanie, Brett has mentioned uh, getting beyond partisanship a couple of times, and we know that's a big issue not only here in Arizona, but nationally in civic life. What, what traits came out for you that may have already existed or that you learned that you think help with that issue? 
Um, keeping it fact-based, I think, is the number one um, opportunity that the Academy presents and making sure that decisions are reached through a very thoughtful process that involves gathering the facts. Um, like Brett said, I think the common good needs to be constantly balanced and having a diverse set of individuals that are committed to good, sound policy choices that are not just short-term fixes but are truly long-term and sustainable. Now, the Academy has about a 12, uh, 12 sessions that you all have to attend uh, long weekends for you, I'm sure, going to Phoenix for that. Uh, and you're about to wrap up. You have three or four sessions to go, and then, and then you have to complete your time there by making a commitment, putting together a plan of action. Brett, what is that starting to look like for you? Uh, the plan of action after the Academy is, includes a mentorship process as they plug you in with other uh, leaders in the state and you begin a mentoring process and then your plan of action of how you get involved. And uh, as I said, that it's an eye-opening experience to see how many ways there are through commissions, through committees, through uh, elected and non-elected positions to become involved. And so as, uh, as we look at that, there are lots of options out there and we're, we're honing that down as we finish. We have just a few seconds, Stephanie. What's your plan of action looking like? Um, I'm still developing it. I'm looking forward to the match process with a mentor, but I will say that I, I think that it's important to not close the door on serving in a variety of different capacities, whether that is potentially an elected office down the line. I'm not sure if that's the fit for me just yet, but I will say that I'm opening my mind to the possibilities and the best way to really truly contribute to the state. Brett Rust and Stephanie Healy, thanks so much for being with me. Thank, Thank you. you.